start lecture 23, uh, so-called, uh, study so-called Freeman equations. Uh, basically, we're going to talk about time evolution uh, in cosmology. And uh, this cosmology is called FLRW cosmology. Uh, uh, remember the cosmological principle, which is, states the space is homogeneous isotropic at each uh, epoch. Then we uh, deduce that the space time is, has a Robertson Walker metric in the co moving coordinates, which has two important parameters the signature, the coverage signature K, and the time dependent scale factor A. So the unknown quantity K and A are determined by the Einstein field equation with cosmic fluid as the matter energy source. Uh, <clears throat> The theory of the expanding universe filled with matter was first written down in 1922 by the Russian physicist and mathematician uh, Alexander Freeman. Remember, George Dematur was the first one to connect the expansion uh, predicted by GR with the galactic uh, redshift. So the F stands for Freeman and L for Dematur. And then, uh, of course, RW is the Robertson Walker uh, metric. So, uh, this is the standard model of cosmology, and uh, uh, is you know, Freeman, the mature Robertson Walker. Now, uh, our presentation is not exactly historical because Freeman and La Mature came first in the 1920s, then Robertson and Walker independently confirmed. Uh, firmed up its mathematical foundations in the 1930s. So, but we sort of talk about uh, Robertson Walker first, and then we talk about the Friedman uh, equation and, uh, and the observation of uh, ex expanded universe. <sighs> the uh, Einstein equation relates the uh, uh, space time geometry. Here's the Einstein's uh, tensor which you remember is second derivative of the metric and is related to the T mu nu, which is energy momentum tensor. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> the, the simple plausible choice for T mu nu is that it's an idea fluid spliced by, by two scalar functions, the mass density and the pressure. We talked about this in, uh, in the book in box 3.5 and in uh, lecture f uh, five, uh, uh, which uh, in the in the coordinate co-moving frame has only diagonal elements. Uh, the one one two two three are just pressure, and the zero zero components is the uh, uh, rest uh, rest energy density, the rho c square, and this can be written in special relativity. Uh, in the tensor form as uh, rho plus p over c square, the full velocity mu nu and p times the metric eta mu nu. So going from special relativity to general relativity, the curved space time is simply just replacing the flat metric eta mu nu by the uh, curved uh, g mu nu. In this in our case, the Robertson, Robertson Walker metric. Okay. <coughs> And the Robertson Walker metric, remember, it has the form of uh, uh, g mu nu. Uh, here's the inverse metric, it's the same as minus one, it's the block diagonal. Uh, this is three by three g mu nu. And if you plug that into here, and then this equation in the, uh, in the co moving frame, it's rho c square, and the, instead of just uh, simple PPP is uh, P times the, the Robertson Walker uh, <coughs> GIJ. So, we'll talk about field equation. Remember, Einstein equation it relates the, uh, the curvature to the energy momentum tensor. Uh, the, first, the first person we apply the Einstein equation. Uh, with matter is uh, uh, is 
uh, Alexander Freeman, uh, and uh, and uh, of course Einstein was the first one. Of course, used the equation to cosmology, but he would talk usually always to say cosmological constant is not uh, directed to, to the matter energy of a of a fluid. Now, in principle, Einstein equation have six independent equations, but because you know we talk homogeneous isotropic symmetries, and they reduce the edge down to six, only two equations. So the first Freeman equation and the second Freeman equation. The first equation relates to the uh, the first derivative of the scale factor and uh, uh, the curvature and the Newton's constant and the mass density. Okay, and uh, uh, rho square is remember we talk about it's a constant distance. For example, in the closed universe, it would be the radius of the three sphere. And second Freeman equation is the question about the second derivative of the scale factor and the Newton's constant times uh, here is probably the pressure and rho c square density or rest, uh, rest energies density. You notice that because we expect p and rho to be positive, so therefore the parentheses are positive, and there's a negative sign here, so therefore the second derivative of a is, is negative. So the expansion should decelerate because negative acceleration uh, due to gravitational attraction among cosmic fluids. So that's what we, we were talking before. And again, I was saying there's the first derivative, there's the second derivative. Uh, we'll make a comment that it can be shown in, in the exercise uh, 8.2 that the, a linear combination of the, the two Freeman equations can lead to a, a statement of energy conservation, which means the change in energy equal to minus uh, pressure times the change in volume. This is the you know, first law of thermodynamics, the energy conservation statement, which can be written as the uh, is, change energy is the energy density times volume so that this is the rate of change of energy equal to minus pressure times change in volume okay and then you, you, this x 8.2 basically you just you notice you differentiate this quantity this quantity can be thought as, uh, rho c square times a square rho a square uh, times uh, uh, times a so if we differentiate you differentiate row a square holding a fixed or holding the row a square fixed differentiate a a dot and uh, uh, then use the first uh, uh, first and second uh, Freeman equations you can get the, the right hand side now this uh, obviously this equation is much easier to remember than the the Freeman second equation because that involves second derivative, and uh, so we usually prefer to use prefer to use this one rather than the second Freeman equation, and it get an easier pass to the density as a function of scale factor. Now there are two independent equations when we talk about Freeman equation. There, there are three unknown functions: the scale factor, the uh, mass density, and the pressure. So we need one more relation because three equation, two equations cannot determine three unknowns. And this provides so-called equation of state, which relates the pressure to the density of the system. Now, usually such an equation of state is a rather complicated equation. But in cosmology, because we're dealing with most of our dilute gas, the equation of state can always be written simply as the pressure is equal to uh, the energy density multiplied parameter w, which is we call equation state parameter w, which characterizes the material content of the system. For example, if we're dealing with a non relativistic matter, then the, the w uh, for, for matter is zero because the pressure is, uh, the left-hand side, is negligible compared with the uh, rest energy uh, density of matters. Uh, but for radiation, so there will be the radiation pressure relating to uh, radiation energy density, and that's the W is one, th one third we talked about that already. Okay. This can derive from Maxwell's equation.
we're not going to talk about how the critical, remember we introduced just a, a critical density and now we see how it came from. Okay. Let's look at the first Freeman equation. Can be written by uh, basically divide the divide of the first factor, which is multiply a over a square over a dot square. And so, uh, so this one and uh, uh, a square just cancel a square here, so just replace the a square term by a dot square term. And this is uh, a square a dot square on the right hand side. Now, but <laughs> But a dot over a is the Hubble's constant at the time t. And uh, so therefore, this is just uh, just, uh, just just basically Hubble's constant in the denominator. Okay. But that is related to the, the critical density, if we define critical density to be. So therefore, this side is just one over, uh, uh, just one over the, 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 the critical density. So therefore, on the right hand side, it's just uh, uh, so we move move the k term to the right hand side uh, to the, the state that uh, change sign to the uh, and then this over one minus rho over critical density. So therefore, in terms of density pr uh, parameter capital omega, which is Rho over C. So this is just, uh, uh, so the first Freeman equation can be written as, a, as an expression for, uh, for curvature signature in terms of the mass uh, density parameter omega. So this again, just like in GR, we can relate geometry, in this case K, in terms of the energy and mass, which is expressed into the density parameter. <sighs> and for example, you notice if omega naught is greater than one, so if the right hand side is positive, so therefore the left hand side, k, must be positive at a closed universe. And if it's uh, uh, omega naught is less than one, in which density is less than critical density, then the uh, geometry is k has to be minus one, which is open universe and, and the flat universe if, uh, if this right hand side vanishes. And we, we talked about this already. This is a two dimension cartoon of the three day space that's related to the density parameter. Now, from the measured value of the omega naught is less, uh, which is for the, for the mass, it's about, about a third, it would seem that we live in a negative curved open uh, universe. Surprisingly, theory consideration, in particular, we're talking about the cosmological constant, together with the new observational evidence, now suggests, in fact, we live actually equal case of a flat universe, whose energy mass density is equals exactly to the critical density. Uh, but also we wonder uh, how a flat geometry compatible with the GR dictum that the matter energy cause space time to curve. Okay, so now we're saying that somehow the geometry is flat. Well, make sure don't confuse. We're talking about uh, when we say that make space time to curve. That's we're talking about the 4D space time. So here we're talking about flat space, and that's what we talk about three di dimensional spatial subspace of the 4D space time. So, uh, so even though we have a k equals zero 3D subspace, the uh, the 4D curvature space time still have a non-zero curvature. Now we're going to take an exercise break. Uh, talk about writing the free, alternative form of Freeman equations. Uh, turn to be very useful, especially when we we'll talk about accelerated universe later on. <laughs>